if you're like me and quite particular about the look and feel of your brand and your application, then you probably want to explore using your own custom dropdowns. Let me show you what I mean. So I have a repeating group with an input on the left and a dropdown on the right. However, this is the native dropdown you see across most applications and I'd prefer something that looks a little bit more like my own brand. So to achieve this, what we'll need to do is use a combination of groups and group focus to create the functionality. I'm going to remove this element and just resolve these two issues. It looks like I just need to remove that and we're good. Okay, first of all, let's create a group. This will act as the drop down. Going to match this input style. E, B, E, B, E, B. And this will be the element that we click on to show our group focus. Next, I'm going to add some text. And this will display our team name. Let's say select team. Okay, I'm going to add a material icon. You can add a regular icon if you don't have material icon installed. This would be arrow. Just positioning it. Okay, great. Just gonna have a look at the responsive very quickly. Put that to the right, that's to the left. Okay, so we've got a group in place with some text and a material icon looking better already. Let's apply the group focus. Down here we have group focus, and I'm going to just drag it in with the approximate width. Okay, we need to attach it to this group dropdown that we created. The dropdown is 207 in width with an X value of 728. So 207. It looks like it's attached. I'm going to remove the style and just add some shadow. So I'm going to use outset, 16, change the box shadow color to jet black and set that to about 8%. This is tried and tested for me, which is why I'm just rushing through it. Now I want the top piece roundness. Let's do five everywhere. Yeah, that's fine. And to make the group focus appear, we need to run a workflow that when we click this group dropdown box, that this appears. So we're going to start edit the workflow and say element actions and toggle. So toggle is like show and hide, but it's just done in a single workflow. If it's not showing, show it. If it is showing, hide it. Show the group focus A. Let's see where we are with this. Okay, fantastic. This looks much, much better than the default drop down that is provided. But how about the options within here? So for those, we're going to drop in a repeating group to display the teams straight from the database. But then to select a team, we actually have to create a custom state. Very simple, won't take very long at all. 
So firstly, to display the results, we're going to drop in a repeating group. I'm just going to have that all the way across. The repeating group is team and the data source is simply do a search for teams. We want to grab all teams. And the design we have will be vertical scroll so that this doesn't grow any longer. You have to scroll within the box. Let's grab some text. This will act as the team name. So that would be current cells team's name. And I want it to start with a similar x value to this, which is 22. Let's change this to 20. Let's change this to 20. Oh, it is 20 already. Okay. Just going to position that slightly. And I've decided that the background color will be white. So let's check on progress. So select a team. Here are the team names. Perfect. So this is looking real nice. Now, how do we make the selection and apply the constraints to this repeating group? I'm going to start edit the workflow on this piece of text. And I'm going to go down to element actions and then set state. I'm going to set state to the page. That's where I set all of my states because it's easier to go back to the page and just find a list of those states. Now the states, I've already set one for user list. I'm going to remove that. I'm going to create a new state and that's just going to be called team. What are we selecting? Well, we are actually selecting a data type of team. And team would be the current cells team. Okay, and to show an example of how we retrieve that state, I'm just going to put in some demo text here, and we're going to reference that state the demos team's name. So when I make a selection, it's going to populate this just to show you what's happening in the background. Social media, marketing, HR. Let's apply it as a search constraint on this repeating group. So any field contains the input searches value. So that is searching this input, any text within this row. Now team is not a text. Team is a team data type. There is text in the team data type, but it's not text in this row, which is why we have the drop down. However, we can find the team from the state that we created. Demos team. So now, now we can filter this repeating group by social media or by marketing or by brand. Now let's go one step further. Let's, much like a drop down, show the state that we have selected or the team that we have selected. So what we'll do is say on the select team text, we're going to add a conditional that states that when the demos team is not empty, so when we have made a selection, then let's just change the text to display that selection by saying, then access demos team's name. What we're also going to do after making the selection, we're going to set the states and we're going to hide this group focus.
marketing, that changes to marketing. HR changes to HR. So I hope this has given you a good indication of how you can customize your own dropdowns to really match the look and feel of your brand.